going on here? Euro dollar. Um, surprise, surprise. Euro dollar is dropping a lot. If we look at the one hour, um, we can see that we are dropping quite a fair bit um, since beginning, uh, since yeah, since beginning of New York um, trading session yesterday. Um, and if we look, and if you look, it's basically we just um, broke down these lows. All right, so pretty much we are going for a downtrend, seems like. Uh, very interesting why it happened. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through this later on. But very interesting why this, this move basically happened. All right. Okay, of course, we had the German CPI here. Oopsie, sorry. Uh, this sort of move here was the German CPI, but this wasn't, all right, I can guarantee to you that this wasn't the move uh, caused by the German CPI. Um, I'm going to touch base on, on the reason soon, um, but I've we have uploaded a video to YouTube today talking exactly about that. So if you come here, uh, it's this one here, the unexpected catalyst. Uh, let me take this off. Um, catalyst behind the US dollar surge. Um, it's the reason is very simple. All right, there's nothing too crazy um, on that, but it made a huge, huge move on the US dollar index. So if we look, um, let's the let's go for the four hour. And so if we look for the four hour, it's now retracing back. But if we if we look here, it's pretty much like how many how many percent is that? Well, nearly one percent, zero point eighty two percent. So let's count as a one percent um trade on, on here. Um, on a move on here on the US dollar index. So all the market is moving quite a lot. Um, and we have the pound dollar as well, moving moving quite fast. We have USD JPY sort of steady, New Zealand dollar, you know, doing exactly what I've mentioned. Aussie dollar continue, continuing to going down um and so on so we're gonna have a look on the economic calendar um we're gonna have a look on of course what just happened you know what have happened yeah for this week and what um will happen in in the coming weeks because as i've mentioned this week it's a very very low week um there's not much happening tonight in 10 o'clock let me check this let me change this to um australian time oh not this one there we go so what time is in brisbane now it's a different no, it's exactly the same adelaide is different anyway um, so tonight, uh, ten thirty. So ten thirty, we're gonna have um, GDP from <clears throat> USA, and that will definitely um, do some, you know, some 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 moves on the market. I I, I I'm expecting it at least. Um, I was talking to Peter Pan, one of our analysts at ACY, and he was like, "No, I don't think it will have much to do with the GDP." Um, but you know, there's always um, different perspectives. I would say, um, and I do, I do think that this can can quite often move the market. Well, not move the market, but you know, do sort of a little move that can um, trigger some 
um, some interest for for some buyer for some buy sides or for some sell sides, and you know try to reanimate the market. If I can use this word, reanimate, reanimate, you know the market. Um, so if you haven't watched this video yet, go and watch it. It's pretty good. Um, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up here. Um, it doesn't cost you anything, and it, it literally just took me one second. So now for today, we're going to have the GDP, um, quarter of a quarter expected to decline, all right, quite a lot. So if we look here, the previous was 3.4, and now the consensus for this quarter is at 1.6. So that's really not great. Even, even if it comes on 1.6, this wouldn't be good. Um, because it's already lower than the forecast, okay? So therefore, um, even even if it comes like 1.6, it doesn't matter. If it comes lower, that's even worse. Uh, but they're already projecting something, uh, they're already projecting some numbers that are lower than the previous. So that means they already know um, that the market, oh, uh, sorry, that the production, that the production wasn't that good in the quarter one, but um, quarter one is January, February, March, right? So we are April and May, so we are two months ahead. If I remember myself, I was reading a FMC report that was last year. They were believing on a strong GDP for the first half of 2024 so i don't know why now it's saying 1.6 because if i'm not wrong again i would have to double check that information but i'm quite quite sure that they were looking about 3.2 the first quarter so they were like okay it's going to be good in the end of everything that's going to be a good um a good standpoint uh, but seem, seems like they've changed the mind here and they've um, revised very, very down. Initial jobless claims, of course, every week we have it. And then tomorrow is a uh, very interesting things. So tomorrow we're going to have um, from Europe, of course, manufacturing PMI from China. Um, and there we go. Eurozone CPI and core CPI month over month and year over year. So there is a very, very important, okay, um, they are expected to have no changes on the core CPI year over year, but the CPI year over year, um, we had already, if I'm not wrong, two readings that was exactly 2.4. Um, so pretty much no changes, but seems like they are predicting a little bit of a uptick on inflation to 2.5 from 2.4 previous. So the consensus is 2.5, and they're looking to um, a previous of 2.4, so 0.1% increase on top of that. Um, okay, and then this is going to be pretty much, we, we have Chicago PMI that doesn't, doesn't affect um, much as uh, the GDP and the CPI. But again, the market is looking for, you know, the market is looking for, for the CPI of US and CPI for Euro, all the CPIs around the, or around the world. And um, to see if that could bring... If, to see if that could bring more foreign direct investors. Other than that, very, very hard. Very, very hard for something to move very crazy, the market. Now, we did had yesterday, sorry, I forgot to mention that, yesterday, we've had the German GDP, uh, German CPI. Uh, there we go, German CPI. So the year over year came in at 2.4% from 2.2, and the month over month came in at 0.1% from expectations of 0.2. Um, 
So in a sense, inflation is falling, but in a sense, inflation is not falling. Um, why is that? Is a very simple answer. So if we look for the month of a month, right, we did have a lower than expected reading. And so um, and already, that was pretty good reading, actually, because the previous was 0.5. Um, forecast was 0.2, and then it came lower than the forecast. So that was, in, in terms of inflation, um, that is good, right? But, but if we look for the year over year, the previous was 2.2, and then now it's 2.4. So inflation have raised and not decreased. So just analyzing the bigger picture again, you know, um, it can bring strength for euro, okay? It could. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. There's nothing else. It's very, very, ah, it's low week, but next month will be much better. If we look for next week, uh, no, next week, there you go. So we can see it's going to be King's birthday on New Zealand. So holiday over there. Uh, Monday, we're going to have already the S&P Global US Manufacturing PMI. And then we're going to have ISM Manufacturing PMI and ISM Manufacturing Prices for US. That's going to be interesting on Tuesday. And then we have oh, we have GDP for Brazil. Um, jolts, job openings. Uh, we're going to have... Let me fix it this up because there's too many things I don't want to see. Uh, you only want this and this. There you go. So Monday, yeah, S and P. Uh, same for the UK. Arizona manufacturing PMI, Germany manufacturing PMI, France, Italy, and Spain. So all the euro area right on Monday. We're gonna have all of these, all of the PMIs coming out. And then Tuesday, we're going to have U.S. Manufacturing PMI and Services PMI. Uh, no, yeah, sorry. So only Manufacturing PMI and Manufacturing Prices. So this will count for the inflation, and this will count of how much they are actually um, producing. producing. Uh, CPI for Switzerland. Retail sales for Australia. Um, of course, George, George job openings for month of April for US because it's a payroll, it's a non-farm payroll week. Uh, GDP for Australia, quarter of a quarter and year over year right on Wednesday morning, 11.30 a.m. Um, when Spain services PMI, Italy, France, Germany, Eurozone, Eurozone again, composed PMI and services PMI. So we're going to get the Manufacturing PMI on Monday, and we're going to get the services PMI here, services PMI on Wednesday. That's interesting. Um, Bank of Canada interest rates decision and rate statement, and then this S&P Global Composite PMI. Um, on Thursday, the ECB interest rates decision. Um Initial jobless claims, that's all right. ECB press conference, that's good. Uh, and GDP for Europe. Uh, Atlanta Fed GDP now, it's not like that. Wow. It's important, but not that much. Um, and then there we go. Um, non fine payroll on Friday and then Saturday. So... All the days, pretty much, next week will be really, really cool. Cut shows that the non-commercial added more longs on the year, but the price is sinking. Why? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so before before we move ahead, let me just answer this question here, guys. Switzy is asking, um, about the the cut cut means for commitments of traders. Um, and he's asking that pretty much there's more people buying euro than what the market is doing because the market is, is dropping right now, right? 
Um, so you, you got some some ways of looking at the cot. Most of the people look at the same way, but you need to understand that the the big traders, big trading floors around the world, like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, or even um, some brokerages, firms, um, etc., they don't trade for a day. All right, they've trade they're trading for building positions. And those banks are holding money from clients so they can use that money later to, I don't know, make some some other um, some other trades off from other with other countries. So they're still holding positions. It doesn't mean that the you know they are believing on a rhetorical move that can happen. Um, but they are holding the positions to be able to capitalize on a very, very long term. Hope that answers your question. So it doesn't necessarily mean that um, if the, the cot is negative or positive, the market will move towards that direction. No, it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't influence on that way. Then most of the people look at the commitment, the commitments of traders, the way of okay, it have uh, it, from one week to another because it's a daily, it's a weekly report. It have switch it to one side to another side, so from negative to positive or from positive to negative. Then they will look to trade that swap that they just that just happened um, on the market, and. That can be profitable, of course, if you if you manage well your risk and you find um, good ways to approach that. But often you can get um, lost, you know, because if one week has become positive, then the not day week will be negative. So, and then the next week again is going to be positive and then negative and then negative. So it's it's a very hard it's not that easy to trade the commitments of traders but it's good for you to have an interpretation of the market not always you will see what you want to see and this is this is life um okay so let's have a look on the charts right now euro dollar let me clean up this Okay, very hard market to read, okay, but we can see that the market is still on a downtrend here, so of course, yes, I'm satisfied with the response, however, could you walk us through the proper way to use it, maybe in some other classes, thanks, yeah, I can definitely do that next week, Um, I just not prepare myself for the commitments of traders today, but I'm um, I can I can arrange something for sure. It's going to be a pleasure. Okay, so we've broke this on here, and then we've broke these on here. And if we look, of course, I'm just drawing these trend lines here, so it makes more sense for you guys. Um, if we look, we haven't broke the stop, right? So pretty much this feels like a pullback to a continuation downtrend. If we get the Fibonacci like that, we've um, we've um, retraced it more than 61%. So we've traced it 70, probably 70 something. Let me see if I have the levels here. Style 708. Yeah, sort of eighty percent of the um, of this this trend here, and looks like it just wants to continue to go down. Right, feels like it it wants to continue to go down because when I look for like maybe a fifty minute or something, I don't have much targets except this one here. All right. This one looks like a nice target, but then this move just doesn't look right for me in a sense of like, okay, 
we having uh, this box all right we're looking for the 50 percent of that um the market broke down but then look how the volume gets very very low here see it's such like we're coming from a huge volume to a small volume to a somewhat small volume to we don't know what okay so that's um that's interesting i would be very happy to watch if we could go to this level if yes if it comes somewhere around here i will be looking to take some trades on that level um it just feel very attractive to me because um that's probably if it comes back to go to continue to go down that's where the level it's uh, probably going to be getting attracted to so going back here to continue to go down break this button all right and then if that happens we most probably will be able to go and ride this wave until here okay 107 so my target is now at 107 see now the trading is presenting oopsie 107.4 now the trading is presenting itself so we take the trade otherwise we don't take a trade okay this is what i want to show to you guys because when i tell you that okay guys look we don't have trades don't be angry at me it's not because i don't want to work it's actually because we don't have trades but now the trade have presented itself fundamentals are lining up with my technical analysis i know i'm not that good on technicals but still guys it's the not it's enough for us to um to know how to read the market so <clears throat> so basically um this is pretty much what i'm expecting it it could it could it could potentially come back somewhere here and that would be such a good level but i don't know i don't think it will come all the way there i think we've messed the boat um it's a line there you go so if it broke down here yeah it could it could retrace it could retrace if the gdp comes very bad as they are expecting this could retrace the market a bit a fair bit but don't wait for this to happen okay now I have this on hands this would be my setup how i would play i would wait for some pullback around this area and then if it comes i would be taking a short position to go to this 1074 1074 um usdgpy is still still the same i don't even i don't even want to touch this um so i'm just going to leave aside new zealand dollar there you go it's happening it's uh working on our favor it's working on our favor what I've, we've discussed already um if we lose this button here right so if we lose this button most probably we will be able to have a free fall towards this level and then after that this level here but that's a big big target all right very big target but still um if it comes to this area that would be great that would be great because most probably will because the us dollar will continue to have some strength and if the us dollar continue to have strength that means that the euro will continue to um i don't know why this is uh, let me let me turn this off for a bit uh where is this there you go uh here uh what's going on i need to use my system why <laughs> Wait a minute, guys. Sorry. Okay. Are you sure you want to stop? Okay. There you go. Um, let me just load this here. I don't know why is it saying 
that my software is viruses when it's not. I use this software every day. Anyways, let me just put it here now, refresh the page. Okay. I want to show this um, box here, but anyway, so um, pretty much, yeah, if the New Zealand dollar, if the New Zealand continues to be a very weak currency, as it has been in the past couple of weeks, um, we will be able to get a pullback somewhere around those levels I've just mentioned here. Uh, I've just mentioned here. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would come, come up like breaching this level here, it's going to be a big take. It's going to be a big bar mark, I would say, if, you know, this would, would be a big mark, um, making it a continuation to the downside and to this level. Uh, USD CAD not looking to trade this. Yeah, not looking to trade this. KJPY, same. Aussie dollar, likable, very likable. Okay. We have we have a target somewhere on 60, 65, 700, I guess. Yeah, 65, 700. And then we have another target at 65, 300. And then 64 is my main, my main target here. But uh, to get to the 64, we would have to break the 65,800. And for that to happen, it, we need a lot of strength for, for, the, for the US dollar. Um, yeah, euro dollar is still on a range here. So we don't know where it could potentially go. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Now... Uh, Australian inflation did had a little bit of an uptick, but nothing too crazy. And still, um, the market didn't react positively. Of course, it did react positively on the beginning you know, on the, the release of the news, um, but then reacted negatively afterwards. And this is exactly what is happening right now. So interesting to see um, how market is working at this moment. So. Uh, definitely, I would be looking to trade Australian dollar against US dollar on the short side, but that's only my um, my portfolio, right? You need to double check your strategies and um, and everything. Now, Aussie JPY not looking to Aussie CAD not looking to CHF JPY um, just done what we we were looking to, All right? Last week, I think I've mentioned that. Oh, no, sorry, Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. I've mentioned this. Okay. Next one is Euro Aussie. It's happening as again. So it came back. Now it's going up. Where's the target we had? Oh, yeah, somewhere around here first and then here. Yeah, Euro Aussie is good. Um, Aussie dollar most probably will be really bad. Uh, it will be a really bad currency for the next coming months until next year. And euro, euro is not that good. I'm not telling that euro. Oh, wow, euro is so good. But between both of them, I prefer to have euros than Aussie dollars. So therefore, I'm, I'm longing euro Aussie, right? And um, I'm not saying I'm doing this, but like in a example, in a fictitious, fictitious, fictitious example. That's what, what should be um, happening if we look for the macroeconomic perspective of view. Um, New Zealand dollar CAD, nothing. USDCHF. USDCHF. Yo, credit agricultural just got target hit. That was good. Yeah. What? CHF, hmm, interesting. Hmm. I wasn't expecting this to be happening here. 
I was expecting to this to get to go up the news. What news? Mm. That's why. Okay, makes sense now. The GDP. Ah, oh, another thing here. Six point four for an employment rate of just went now, thirty six minutes ago. Um, unemployment rate for Europe. This is why the the market is coming back. Yeah, nah. This is this this won't be able to move the market. Definitely won't. It's not that that a big of a deal. That's another um reason why the market euro dollar is going up a little bit. Yeah, look, GDP is good, but I don't think uh, uh, most of most investors would be looking to continue to to short um, US dollars or whatever to buy Swiss francs. So, still believing on a on a long possibility here. All right, not not now, of course. We would have to reevaluate the situation when it comes to a standpoint like that. Um, but most probably, yeah, it could even potentially break those highs if we if we look back, you know, still practically the same highs of October 2023. So there is chances of this continue to go up. All right. Now, um, you uh, gold. Gold. As I've mentioned all right, last week, I still have a target somewhere on here. So I still have a fair bit that there is pot potentially there's potential to continue to go. Um, if we look to a smaller time frame, it's just very hard to trade gold on like on a very small time frame. Uh, at least that's what I find with my strategy. Um, what's the range on here? Let me have a look on that. When it's load, so I, I'm, I'm look, I'm willing to take a short. I'm willing, not a bad option. That's a good, good sort of standpoint. Not bad. What's that? It's gold. Nah, sh wouldn't shouldn't be. Five minutes. Nah, shouldn't be. Yeah. Target wise, twenty three twenty. Twenty three twenty. Yeah, yeah, it can happen. Twenty three twenty. Not bad, not bad. Actually, let me take a trade in my account. Just a second. Where is it? There we go. Here, gold. Okay. Let me put some TP. What's the TP? Twenty three twenty. Listen, guys. This is listen, guys. This is my trade, all right? You don't. It's, it's not for you to take. It's just my trade. It's just so I don't lose the opportunity here. Anyways, there is a potential to continue to escalate this trade um, down here, but that's gonna be. Uh, I already know. I know how gold goes, man. It feels like it's gonna go now, but it it won't. But anyways, that's all right. It's all good. I just don't know why this is uh different. Okay, so if we look now for the US dollar index, um, something huge happening, right? Uh, if we look for the five minute, uh, was sort of a big big move here, and then. 
again, nothing, and then going back down. So the reason is, first of all, we look at the 10 years. The 10 years have done a huge, huge move to the upside as well. So, oops, sorry. So the 10 years have done a huge move to the upside. The 10 year yields, so basically higher the yield, more the investors get paid. Therefore, more people attracted by US dollars. Therefore, US dollars go higher. Oh, that's a uh, simple maths. Um, go stronger, basically. So simple maths. And uh, if it's on the quote, it goes. The market goes down. If it's on the base, the market goes up. If it's a uh, uh, versus a um, stronger base, the market stays the same, and so on. I've explained this so many times already, and it's on the YouTube channel as well. So the US dollar tends to follow the the the, the dollar index. Of course, they're not exactly the same, but um, I do like that. But they're very similar. So from here down and then consolidation and up. So, ah, so yeah, down, consolidation, up. Here is quite similar to here, All right, and so on. So, uh, basically, the US dollar got strong, um, carrying out by the um by the the the, the 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 10 years now some things uh that you need to know um one of the members got kicked out from the fmc all right i can't remember his name member laid off What's his name? Ah, uh, I forgot his name. I need to check. So one of the 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 usual members from the FMC got kicked out, and he was kind of a dovish guy. Right, and then they need to put someone in, and they've put a very, very hawkish person that has said, have stated on the media that uh, she thinks that five percent interest rates is good. It's a, it's the new normal. All right, so that's a very hawkish phrase. Um, so she basically willing to leave leave the rates higher for longer. Okay, and therefore the market have priced fi precify this already into the rate cuts. So if we look now for the rate cuts into the US, we can see that the market have again moved from um, September now to November. So September, we were expecting a 25 base points cut. So 60% were here a few weeks ago. Um, now only 43% is here. And 50.7% is expecting no cuts. And 0.6% is expecting a hike. And 4.5, 4 4.2% is expecting 25, sorry, so 50 base points cut. Mm -hmm. Then we're not willing, all right, to, to have a cut here as we were a few weeks ago. What the market have done. Okay. If they don't cut in September, they're going to cut in November. And then they've moved to here. What will probably be happening is they will see that they won't cut in November, then they go to December, and then they see they won't cut in December, and then it goes to um, January. And it basically, sorry, it basically will continue to do that since we finish the year, and next year they cut the actual rate. So um, very, very hard, very, very hard to to, you know, say something like oh it will happen it won't happen because ah oh, it's a pain it's it's really a pain inflation is still too high employment is still too high economy do a man that is working well i know but uh, not the way they want so that's pretty much what is happening on the market guys um does anyone have any question No questions. Okay, then.
Well, guys, thank you so much. Another week have come to an end. Um, very guys, do you have any targets for GBPSD? No, I don't have any targets for GBPSD. I'm looking to the to the downside, but like I don't have any specific specific target. Oh, well, I guess it could say here, maybe twenty six, twenty six six hundred, maybe. Twenty six six hundred, yeah, that that's a good target. Twenty six six hundred is a good target. Um, after that, that's not much. Yeah, twenty six six hundred. I guess one point twenty six six hundred would be a good target, in my opinion, for the GBPSG. What happens if GDP comes out bad? Well, then euro dollar most probably will go up because this little move on um euro dollar here up is pretty much because of the unemployment rate being good. That was a big, big change. So from 6.5 to 6.4, sorry, not a big change, but still um, making this little move here happening on the market. Um, if the GDP comes bad tonight, um, it wouldn't affect the bearish buyers. It would depend then on tomorrow um, CPI for Europe. So the big the big boss is the CPI, all right, for Europe. Um, and we just need to watch out for that. Otherwise, it's all good. All right, guys. Thanks again. I uh, hope everyone have a lovely weekend with family and friends. Um, take care. And I will see you next week on Tuesday. All right. Thanks, guys. See you.